for grid block system. That has constant <coughs> pressure boundary condition here, no flow here. Right. So this is the same problem we looked at last time. So if we write down the equations for block one, what I get is Block two, Block three. Block four. So remember, in the interior, away from the boundaries, the equations look the same. Right? They have this, this term. They, ha they look the same. They're just indexed differently. But on the ends, where you have boundary conditions, the equations are modified due to the boundary conditions. So on, this ca on the case of the constant pressure boundary condition, you get a 3t here. And then you have this 2t PV right here. And then on the last equation, instead of a 2t, you just have a t due to the no flow condition on that side. Right. So we went over that in detail last time, how we, can, how we derive those. And you're going to be expected, well, listen to me carefully, you're going to be expected to know how to come up with the equations right, how to apply the boundary conditions right, if, even if I give you a different set of boundary conditions. Okay. So again, I think I said this last time, I'll say it again. On a homework or an exam, I could ask you a question where the boundary conditions could be both constant pressure boundary conditions, both constant flow boundary conditions, or the constant pressure boundary condition be on the right and the no flow on the left, or any combination thereof. What would you understand? Yes. Well, uh, Constant flux or constant pressure. Right. 
it's, it's most typical to have a no flow on the boundary, right? Because again, most reservoirs are sealed, right? So that's the most common boundary condition is to have no flow. But there is a possibility, and we want to be general enough to allow for a constant flux, right? And in that case, uh, a constant flux would be a scenario where maybe you have an aquifer feeding the reservoir or something like that, some flow rate. And we'll, so right now we're just talking about boundary conditions. Really soon we'll talk about wells. Right? So a well is, is also a, a constant flux if it's an injector, right? It's a constant flux in if it's an injector or a constant flux out if it's a producer. Or uh, not necessarily constant. It's, it's a flux in or a flux out. So then with these equations, right, we have a linear system here. We can write them in a matrix form. that multiplies the vector P1 1 plus 1, P2 1 plus 1. And that's equal to So all I did was just rewrite these equations in matrix form. So then finally, if we identify this as the B matrix now, this as the T matrix, this is the B matrix, right? Then in the final form, we can write these equations in matrix form as T plus 1 over delta T B. And you know, in the notes, in the notes, these are bold-faced, so it's very clear that they're matrices. I think I can't really do that with my handwriting. So what I'll do is I'll put two bars over the things that are matrices. Because you have the individual B1 through 4 and the Ts. 
these are these are constants associated with the material properties in each grid block. Then you know these are the matrices that are extracted from it. So what's the solution to this equation? So the solution would be P n plus 1 is equal to T plus Right, this is a matrix. This thing is a matrix. So I have to invert it to solve the equation. Right, this is an implicit this is an implicit system. So I have to invert this matrix to solve it for the new pressures. It, it just has to do with delta T. So remember, we, we called V the accumulation. Right? So the, what it had was material properties associated with the compressibility of the fluid, the porosity, and the, and the pore volume, right? the volume of the fluid. Really, it was, it was the volume of the fluid, because it's the total volume of the grid block times the porosity, which is the volume of the fluid times the compressibility over the formation volume factor. So those are. Those are material properties associated with the grid block, right? Whereas delta T is really a time discretization thing. So it's just, I mean, I see your point. Well, it's just another constant. Stick it in there. But what we labeled as B are actually material properties associated with the accumulation, right? So we wanted to give it a name associated with the accumulation. Whereas delta T has nothing to do with the accumulation. It's a, it's a time discretization parameter, right? So it's... You know, I see your point, but uh, th I mean that's the reasoning behind it. Is that you, you want to, if you're going to call it the accumulation, you can't stick delta t in there because has nothing. To do, delta t has nothing to do with the d accumulation. Yeah. Oh, you're right. about that. So your, your Q vector, uh, in this case, contains terms that are associated with the constant pressure boundary condition. But later, it'll also con this will be where the wells go. Right? So that's why we call it Q. We typically use Q as a flux term. Right? So so later, the, the wells will show up here also. We'll discuss those later. Okay.